You know, a couple of months ago I said that this channel was renamed Gamer J Lee Gaming and Beyond. Well, this is definitely a little bit beyond, but I feel like this needs to be said, so let's just get right into it. Hey everyone, Gamer J Lee here, and welcome back to another video. And this is a subject I never thought I would have to talk about. I never thought I'd be sitting here talking about wrestling, allegations, and the Me Too movement. Yeah, I never thought that that would be a case that I would have to bring up. But obviously, that's going to be needing to be talked about because there's been a little bit of drama and I'm kind of pissed off at a channel. But let me start from the very beginning. Now, as you guys may know, I've been a wrestling fan for a very long time, and over that time, I've smarted myself up to the business. I know, it's a work. There is a predetermined winner and loser, and that's just how the business has been. But the bumps they take are very real and very dangerous. But over the time, I've realized that it is a work, and there's a lot of things that go on backstage, and a lot of things that don't get talked about. But this story that I'm about to talk about is very real. Now, this is Enzo Amore. If you guys aren't familiar with him, then you probably don't watch the product anymore. But earlier this year, he was released from WWE. More on that in a minute. But I kind of want to talk about his history before we get into the serious part of this video. Now, first off, Enzo Amore started in NXT with a tag team of himself and another wrestler by the name of Big Cass. He's seven feet tall and you can't teach that. Now another thing you couldn't teach Enzo Amore is how to respect the business and how to be a good performer. Now I'm not saying the dude wasn't entertaining when he wasn't doing his little stick of, you know, I'm Enzo Amore and I'm a certified G and you can't teach that. That was funny and his promos were pretty entertaining, but Enzo had the problem of running his mouth and not respecting the business. Now you're probably saying, what do you mean? What do you mean respecting the business? Well, there's a lot of rules whenever it comes to the locker room. I don't know them. I don't have the right to know them. I'm not a pro wrestler. But one thing I will say is that you never bring people backstage that are not supposed to be backstage. And he tried to flex a lot. He really tried to flex his power and his popularity because a lot of people like Denzo. I'm not going to lie. A lot of fans like Denzo because he was entertaining. But they didn't like him for his actual skills in the ring. They just liked him for his skills on the mic. And over time, the dude got an ego. He might have had the ego back in NXT. I never heard anything about it, but I know when he was up on main roster, that's when he really started getting his ego and started getting in a lot of trouble, aka bringing people backstage that shouldn't have been there. But that's not the only thing that happened with Enzo Mori, as there is more problems he caused for himself in WWE. He also pissed off his fellow superstars and got kicked out of the locker room, which is basically happened to a very small list of superstars, but the funny thing is, he's one of the only ones who really never came back from it due to what we're about to talk about next. Now this isn't the end of Enzo's story, as late last year he was put onto 205 Live after everything that happened. After he pissed off the entire back locker room, after he taken people backstage that shouldn't have been there, he got put onto 205 Live. Now you're probably wondering, well, what, what does that mean? Well, back then, 205 Live was considered a joke because it was originally a project that Triple H started that had an amazing tournament with a lot of talented superstars, and then it got its own show on the WWE Network, but it was taken away from Triple H and was produced by Vince McMahon, and he treated it like every other main roster show out there and kind of started to kill it slowly. Now, Enzo had pissed off a lot of people, and they didn't want him on the main roster, so he was put onto 205 Live, one, to get him away from the main roster, and also, basically, to try and save 205 Live, because one thing that Enzo had was charisma, but he was not talented. I'm going to say that now, Enzo Amore was not a talented wrestler. And for some fucking reason, they decided to put the Cruiserweight Championship 
on Enzo Amore. And I'm not gonna lie, his promos between him and Neville in those last few weeks of Neville being in the WWE were excellent. I loved the whenever he was celebrating his jersey and retiring it and Neville came out and he says, I came here to destroy you. And basically they come out and they beat the crap out of him after he just, you know, you know, undressed all of them in front of the crowd and disrespected them. Basically, they beat the living shit out of him. But a few months into his run as the Cruiserweight Champion, he basically got me too Now, Enzo had known about these allegations for a little while, but he basically didn't let WWE know until the shit hit the fan and it came out publicly that these allegations were put against Enzo Amore. And soon after, he was released from WWE and we didn't really hear much from him for quite some time. Basically, he was pretty quiet until he was acquitted of everything and proven not guilty of these accusations. Which, I'm happy, because during this whole thing, I had a lot of friends who said, yes, he did do it, he's a scumbag, yada, 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 and then there was a lot of people that said, no, he didn't do it, or, hey, we should wait until it's proven that he is guilty or not guilty. And it was a really back and forth thing, and I just sat in the middle and I said, look, maybe he did do it, maybe he didn't do it. I'm going to wait for a judge to decide and wait for an actual verdict like this should be when these kind of situations come up. It shouldn't just be listen and believe, it should be listen, see the proof, and then believe or don't believe. There needs to be proof. And that's how these things work. There's been so many false allegations ever since the Me Too movement started that it's starting to ruin what this means, what this movement means for women who have been abused. And that's what it is. It is for people who have been abused that need to speak out. And whenever you put up false allegations, then it ruins it for the true victims. Now, recently, Enzo Amore came out with a music video a couple days ago last month. And I'm not going to lie, he's not a good rapper. I'm sorry, Enzo, you're very, you know, a very good talker, but rap is not your thing. It's not terrible, but it, it's, it's, it's nothing I would want to listen to over and over again. It wouldn't be my new jam sitting in the car. I think I'll stick with Post Malone. But there is a section of the video I do like, and I really do vibe with the message he's trying to explain, but obviously the people over at What Culture don't agree, either that or they didn't even listen to the music video, as they claim Enzo Amore is misogynistic. As from the ashes like a phoenix, middle finger to the sky gripping my consensual penis. Yes, Enzo Amore released his debut rap song stroke video and oh god, it is wonderful in that it is far, far worse than anything you could have possibly imagined. The song is as virulently misogynistic as it is incomprehensible and his gravelly mumblings are about as well-timed as his bumps over the top rope. The very first line calls out this sloppy jalopy son of a bitch who's this morbidly obese guy who I guess we're supposed to infer is journalist David Bixenspan, who is also sat there watching the 25th anniversary of wrestling, which I guess is some kind of like meta stab at the people who questioned his knowledge of the game. This is all before his flow even starts, and that flow is god awful. He flits between weird impressions of like a Randy Savage, a terrible white boy DMX and some homeless drunken guy just yelling on the street. Then he gets obsessed with pudding for a while, saying the only thing he put in that pudding was proof. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding, bitch. Pudding ain't got no roofie in. Nah, I ain't Bill Cosby, bitch. And yeah, he literally just rhymed bitch with bitch. He did perform a half decent kip up in the vid though, which I'm guessing took multiple takes as he's never performed anything as athletic as that in the WWE. We then disappear into a smorgasbord of 90s rap cliches. He plays around with some hilariously ironic casket imagery before just blatantly ripping off the California love video. Then he ends it all by digging his own grave and getting gassed out in the process. Finally, some realism. To anyone that doubted me, my auntie and mama are still proud of me. 
I'm sure they are, Enzo. I'm sure they are. You know what I think it's time for? Enzo Amore, you're having... Uh... Actually, no, you're not worth it. Go home and grip your consensual penis. Now this is the first time I heard about this music video and I was actually quite interested. I did not know that he did a music video and I wanted to check it out. And after hearing everything that he had to say at What Culture, I kind of was wondering, did he really say like some of this shit? Is the song as bad as it as he says it is? Yeah, the song's bad and he has no flow. He's not talented in my opinion when it comes to rapping. But there's one section of the song that I think has a good message, and the fact that this guy, I don't know his name, and I don't really care to know his fucking name, calls him misogynistic, is basically a big fat fucking lie, because during this song, he comes out and defends true Me Too movement people, and says that basically these false allegations that you're throwing out ruin the Me Too movement and the women's resolution, what the fuck you doing? Basically saying, why are you, when you do these lies, when you make these false allegations against men who didn't do anything just to get a little bit of popularity, you're ruining for true victims. You're ruining it for people who have been abused, for people who have been mistreated by true monsters. But, you probably don't want to hear it from me. So, Enzo, take it away. Rockstar lifestyle might not make it. Fame can be forsaken. Tweeting allegation, falsified statement. Fake news and defamation. Due to media speculation. Based on misinformation. Is the basis of damnation for our whole fucking nation. Break a story. And then you jump to conclusions. Break an ankle when you land and never cast the resolution. TMZ owes me some restitution in the midst of dissolution Choosing public prosecution over constitution Ain't the right solution Gender persecution hurts the Me Too movement And our women's revolution The fuck you do? All of you that have ever been abused You scream me too, I stand by you I stand by you yeah. But for the wrong for the accused Justice long overdue So here's a big fuck, fuck you Fuck you Yeah, from me to you Now let me let me ask you guys something you listened to that part of the song you heard that there was a line in the you know five minute song where he says consensual penis now what do you think whenever you think consensual penis basically he's saying that it was not rape it was consensual between him and this person it's basically a on the nose joke and when it comes to this section I just showed you guys is there anything misogynistic about that no, he's talking about the mainstream media taking things out of context and just throwing allegations and doing the whole listen and believe. They want you to listen and believe and believe that he's the bad guy. And that's what a lot of people did. They just listened and believed. Now, a lot of people were pissed at him because of his wrestling career and that he actually did cause a lot of problems. But also, people just wanted to think he was a monster. Now, if you listen to the lyrics of that section, you also hear him defend the Me Too movement, and I'm gonna just repeat that little part of the song just to clear it up because he does go pretty fast. So listen very closely to this section of the song just to make sure you guys heard it. Gender persecution hurts the Me Too movement and our women's revolution. The fuck you do? All of you that have ever been abused, you scream Me Too, I stand by you. I stand by you. So I hope you guys all heard that. Basically, he's defending the Me Too movement for the people who actually have been affected by this. People who have been abused, who have been mentally and physically scarred. He stands by them, and I stand by them too. But if you have falsely accused someone, if you have abused them to basically try and get a little bit of fame, to get your 15 minutes like this woman tried to do to him, then fuck you. That's all I can say. That is all I can say. But let's go back to our buddies over at What Culture because, guys, you know, former employees of you are not innocent. Meet Adam Blompier, former employee of What Culture Wrestling. Now, you're probably saying, hey, I recognize this guy. He was a host on there for quite some time and he, he was really entertaining, really funny guy. Yeah, he was. 
he was also manipulating women by flexing his clout as a YouTuber to get them to send him nudes. Yeah, you didn't know about that, did you? Well, about a couple of months ago, whenever Cultaholic started up, basically it was right before the launch that he came out and admitted that he'd been using his clout as a YouTuber for years to basically get women to send him images of, you know, themselves naked. And basically he lied to them, he manipulated them into thinking that he was in an open relationship with his then girlfriend, basically trying to manipulate women. Yet he would go on in his What Culture videos when he was under the banner of What Culture saying how badly the Attitude Era treated women and that he was for the women all the time and everything else. Yet he would go in his free time while still being under you know contract to What Culture Wrestling and basically try and flex his cloud as the good guy and you know that he he's this famous YouTuber to get them to send him nudes and if you don't believe me there's the letter you can see it all there yourself he put this out on his twitter i'll even have a link to it down in the description below if you want to read it yourself but basically he was an employee and he was doing this for years under what culture's banner so where do they have the right to call someone else mis misogynistic whenever one of their employees was doing this for years under their banner now look, I will not defend Enzo Amore on how he acted in WWE. He acted like an asshole, a jackass, he was untalented in the ring, but he did have talent on the mic. But that does not excuse his actions backstage and how he treated the business. It was very disrespectful and I condemn him for those things. But what I'm not okay with is the fact that what culture wrestling is just labeling this whole thing as misogynistic and not listening to the true message of the song. The true message of the song is that he got screwed and the mainstream media including what culture has basically turned him into a monster even though he's been proven as not guilty and are just labeling him as misogynistic. But I want to hear from what culture wrestling. What did Enzo Amore do in his music video that was even a little bit misogynistic? Is it because he said uh, consensual penis? Is, is that why? Is that make him a misogynist? Because basically he was saying that the sex between him and the person that accused him of rape? Basically that it was totally consensual between the two of them? Does that make it misogynistic? Or are you saying it was misogynistic whenever he said fuck you to the people who make false rape allegations against people just so they can get a little bit of fame? Fuck you to the people who lie and basically risk people's lives just to get a little bit of popularity and a little bit of attention. Is that misogynistic to basically say fuck you to people who lie about people and try and put them in jail and ruin their entire lives? Yet for years, you had Adam Blompier in your company being a true misogynist, basically manipulating women to get what he wanted. And he represented your company for years. And I believe he left on his own terms with the rest of Cultaholic. And he decided to come out about his whole big thing after he basically got caught by his girlfriend. You had this guy representing you for years. Yet because this, this one man who basically was accused of rape decides to make a music video to get a message across and basically try and vent a little bit of how he went through so much shit for the past couple of months. You call him misogynistic, yet you had this monster sitting in the background of your company for years, manipulating women, flexing his clout as a YouTuber. Are you fucking kidding me? Anyways guys, I'm done for now, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. After everything I went over, I am not biased for Enzo Amore. I don't like the guy, I don't think he's very talented, but he is not a monster. He is not a misogynist. He came out in defense of the Me Too movement, as well as people who have been abused by true monsters, and yet what culture wrestling will label him as a misogynist? Are you kidding me? But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. I really would like to know. And uh, I think that there will be some more traditional Gamer J Lee content coming out very soon. So look forward to that in the near coming days. But as always guys, Gamer J Lee signing out.